You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Good morning, creatures of the world, of the earth, of the, the land that we use to sustain our lives. Good morning. Hallelujah. (laughs) (laughs) Where did I just get transformed to? (laughs) Southern preacher voice. Okay, all right. Anyway, welcome to another epic episode of Ask a Drone You. My name is Paul. (laughs) And I'm Rob. And this is episode 729. I should have said, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask a Drone You. So the coffee's flowing. <laughs> I, I don't know where he gets that energy. I wish I had a little bit of it. But anyways, we are glad that you're with us. And uh, this is an interesting question. I actually think you could, people could have fun with this. If you've got a, a stout enough drone and maybe some snow and a board or a skateboard as you've experienced or some water. I don't know. There's a lot of fun things that could happen with this question. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm actually very excited to talk about this question because we actually did a video of quote unquote uh, drone skating ourselves. So this question is all about, can you tow someone with a drone? Yeah, Um, can you? So we're gonna be talking about that. I actually have um, part 107 uh, pulled up here. I actually wanted to do this myself. So I went down to FISDO probably a year and a half ago to actually talk to them because I've been in enough trouble. Or perceived trouble. Gotten enough letters. I've gotten enough letters to fill a basket full of wonderment. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, um, I, I wanted to make sure that I wouldn't get in trouble myself because, uh, well, that would suck. And um, I actually asked our local FISDO representative, who was pretty kind with me, and uh, ended up letting us do um, essentially uh, the job. And I didn't even end up really using the video because the video didn't turn out as nice as I would have liked it to. The vision in my mind and what came out were two totally different things. It happens. Yeah, unfortunately. Can't win them all. So that is true. But anyway, um, before we get into today's question, just want to say a very special thank you to our friends at Energen. If you need a portable battery charger that can charge up to four batteries at one time without the use of a power outlet or an inverter, that's right, it's just a battery. You can carry it where you want to. Charge your Phantom batteries, your Mavic batteries, your unique batteries. Sadly, Solo won't work. Um, but that's okay, because if you're using that drone, then you are at a very high disadvantage. Um, anyway, uh, nothing personal against you, just the drone itself. Um, anyway, uh, if you want to get a discount on these portable battery chargers, which I actually use myself, really love them. I use the A40 so I can charge different batteries like the unique batteries or um, the uh, the fan batteries. Also with the A40, you can switch between 3S and 4S batteries. Really, really useful. If you get the M10 battery charger, uh, I believe it only works on 3S batteries, so the Mavic batteries um, and... You know, that's really going to cut you off there. Um, Just use discount code DRONEUM10, though, if you do want one of those Mavic battery chargers or DRONEUA40 for one of the A40 battery chargers. But anyway, Rob, why don't you go ahead and play that funky question. Hey, Paul. Hey, Rob. Camp New Jersey. I had a question that's pretty simple, yes or no answered, but kind of off the wall in that I'm just wondering if there's anything that violates Part 107 when you're pulling somebody on the ground behind a drone, like the guys that do the, the quote, quote unquote drone surfing, they, they pull the skimboard in shallow water behind an Alta 8. Um, I just asked the question because I, I don't see anything that's technically illegal about it. It doesn't seem overly professional. I, I'll grant it that, but I don't see anything that violates a 107 regulation. And, you know, it's winter here where I'm at. If there was snow on the ground and some other guys and I wanted to go, not that I own an Alta 8 or an S1000 or anything, but if I did and I wanted to rig it up and pull people at the local AMA field behind the drone on their snowboards, would I be violating anything part 107 or would I just kind of be drawing the ire of the other flyers at the AMA field? So I'd love to hear your take on that. Um, let me know. Thanks. So thanks again for the question, Ken. I just can't help but get this visualization of being at an AMA field and 
you know, some of the older gentlemen that have been going there for years and years and flying their planes and so forth, wonderful guys, but they would see this and I can imagine the freaking outness that would ensue. I could imagine the freaking <laughs> outness too, but then I think of all the videos where small Cessna aircraft are pulling skiers on the water. <laughs> yeah. What about that? Yeah. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, so be, he mentions that it might actually be considered unprofessional. I don't see it that way. I mean, okay, I see it so as no, I, just I, be safe. I mean, I, well, you know, I know that's why a very he's saying that's that. a very subjective word, Rob. So what might be safe to one person, like Michaela driving the speed limit, may not be safe to me, an aggressive driver who tries to go a little faster than the speed limit to keep up with the flow of traffic because I understand the scientific nature of if everyone is going the speed limit, then the fifth car behind the person going the speed limit will actually be going five to seven miles an hour below the speed limit, thus inhibiting the flow of traffic. Okay, so what you're saying then is in regards to whether or not it's professional, it depends on who's flying? I think it's is depends. Is that what you're saying? I think it depends on who's interpreting the safety because like I said, I wanted to tow someone on a skateboard. Right. And I talked to our local FISDO here um, and, uh, you know, he was telling me that I had to do certain things. Like we had to shut down the boardwalk. Mm -hmm. We had to shut down the area around it. It Safety. had, it had Safety. to be clear of people. Yeah. Um, you know, which all things we did, we even got a permit from the city of San Diego. And it's always funny too, because like, I'm always very vague with my city permits. Like mm -hmm. I'm always just like drone flying. Yeah. I mean, wakeboarding, wake skimming, ocean skimming. Thank you. And some people are like, well, I want to tow a skimmer into a wave at the ocean at this beach, and I think it'd be really cool if we do this. And there may be other people around, but there may not be. And I want to shut the beach down. And then, size and then, of the wheels on the skateboard. Yeah, yeah, and, everything. Yeah. and the city's like, "There's no way we're gonna let you do that." Yeah. But if you're like, "Well, we just want to fly a drone with a skimmer. It's gonna look great. We're gonna make America great again." Then they're probably gonna be all for it. <laughs> well, in so, that case, they would not be all for it if yeah, you put I it that way. <laughs> I wouldn't be for it either if I heard that terminology. Uh, Anyways, no, I'm just saying that, like, um, y you know, when you do file your permits and whatnot, understand what is um, relevant to each agency. Sure. Because if you are shutting down an area for TV or film. As long as your insurance is covering what you're doing specifically, and that's really who, what matters, because as long as the what I found is that as long as the city it is insured against the a, the activity that's being done, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. So that that's really like the key here. So when you're filing that city permit and you want to do something like this, if you need to file a city permit, if you're on private property, like an AMA field, sometimes on private property, mm -hmm. then uh, chances are you don't have to file that city permit. So tow away. But when I yeah. asked if we could tow someone, they were like, well, you're not carrying a hazardous object because that's what the law says. And I'm about to read the law here in a second. Um, you are towing someone, but you could potentially uh, put too much tow load on the drone and cause it to crash. So you need to make sure the area is clear. But anyway, I pulled up part 107 right. and we are on page 326. Or if you're reading the Drone Pilot Field Kit, available at dronepilotfieldkit.com. Then you can go to page 334. But five commenters suggested that the language in the final rule regarding the dropping of objects should mirror the language in 14 CFR 9115. These commenters suggested that while proposed 107.23b does not necessarily differ in substance, substance from 9115, it should be made explicit that the rule does not prohibit the dropping of any object if reasonable precautions are taken to avoid injury or damage to persons or property. DJI suggested that the FAA adopt the hazard to persons or property standard used in 9115 for external load and towing operations. There's the towing operations. Mm -hmm. 9115 prohibits an object from being dropped from an air aircraft in flight in a manner that creates a hazard to persons or property. Section 107.19b of this rule uses a similar standard of undue hazard with regard to loss of positive control of a small unmanned aircraft. In order to promote regulatory consistency throughout Part 107, the FAA has rephrased the regulatory text of 107.23b to use undue hazard standard specified in 107.19b and revised 107.23b will prohibit the dropping of objects from a small unmanned aircraft in a manner that creates an undue hazard to persons or property. DJI noted that the term hazard is inherently subjective. 
DJI acknowledged that it may be impossible to adopt a non-subjective standard and requested that the FAA provide guidance on the types of operations that the FAA would consider to be hazardous. As discussed earlier, 107.23 Section B will prohibit dropping of an object from small unmanned aircraft in a manner that creates an undue hazard to persons or property. For purposes of this rule, a falling object creates an undue, ha- an undue hazard to persons or property if it poses a risk of injury to a person or a risk of damage to property. This standard will be applied on a fact-specific basis. For example, a small unmanned aircraft that drops a heavy or sharp object capable of injuring a person in an area where, the, where there are people who could be hit by an object would likely create an undue hazard to persons. Yeah, thank you. The remote pilot in command of the operation could take reasonable precautions prior to flight by moving people away from the drop site to a distance where they would not be hit by a falling object if something goes wrong with the operation. Guidance associated with the enactment of Part 107 will provide additional examples to help remote pilots comply with 107.23 Section B. So I'm going to pull up 107. 107- Two three B, give me give me a second. It's All towards right. the end here. So somebody likes to pontificate in these things. Pontification. <laughs> okay. I just think it's funny how obvious some of this is, but it's okay. One hundred seven point two three hazardous operation. No person section A operate a small unmanned aircraft system in a careless or reckless manner so as to endanger the life of property or another. That's kind of the catch all. Mm-hmm. That's where they can get you for most sure. things. Or Section B, allow an object to be dropped from a small unmanned aircraft in a manner that creates an undue hazard to persons or property. Then we move into Section 107.25, which is operating from a moving vehicle. Section 107.27, alcohol or drugs. 107.229, daylight operation. So what does it say about the total weight of the drone and what is included in that weight? Like the 55-pound rule... Would it include, this is not something that we've talked about, would it include something that you're towing? Because if so, that'd be an issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. But again, when I asked, because it was kind of unclear and subjective to me, they pretty much said that as long as there weren't people around, that they were okay with it. Yeah, so they didn't bring up the weight issue. No. But that doesn't, yeah, okay. But that's just limited to one specific FISDO guy. Right. We all know that different inspectors think of things differently. They come at it with a different angle. Um, you know, they are compliance driven. But I asked before we even did something that was similar. It wasn't on a snowboard, mm-hmm. which I have more fear of this actual action because it's on a snowboard because the person is strapped into the board. So it's not like he can just run away if all of a sudden they put too much load on the drone and the drone comes crashing right over him. Mm-hmm. He would have no way to protect himself. You know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and so that person that's being pulled, does that person not have the opportunity to say, I'm okay with the risk? Right? Under 107. Say that again? Sorry. Does the person being pulled have the personal authority to say, I understand the risk of being pulled by this drone. Well, then the I'm ne- okay with that risk. The next question Party too on, is, yeah, Wayne. The next, <laughs> Party on, Wayne. Um, the next question is, you know, is then the person being towed by the drone part of the production? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that too. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's definitely interesting. So... Um. <laughs> so how we answered the question. Well, the answer that we know is that when you went to the local FISDO guys and did exactly what this question is referring to, well, not exactly because he brought up uh, snow. snow, but in essence, Which it's the same thing. Which even makes it more dangerous if you think about it because super cold temperatures on those big batteries that an Alta 8 would use is, I mean, we saw a drone fall out of the sky at a skiing event that was a large scale drone using mm-hmm. the same type of batteries. Um, you know, there is a higher propensity for failure here towing a snowboarder. A, they're strapped in. B, it's cold. So your battery consistency is not going to be as, uh, as high as it normally would be. Voltage drop off has a higher propensity. Um, I think there's more issues with doing it in the cold. And we don't know based off of what was going on through our FISDO guy's mind. You know, we were in California. Right. It's warm all the damn time. Yeah, and so does that cross over into the hazardous verbiage that 107 discusses? Yes. 
So what's your conclusion here, Rob? <laughs> My conclusion is <laughs> we're going to deliberate. No, I, I'm I, in, I, would th- I would say that there's nothing that says you can't do it. I, That's would what say, I would say I would say that you as the remote pilot in command should make the call yourself. I think it would be best to call your local FISDO guy, maybe call three. Um, you may have one say one thing and two say something else. I think it would be really interesting to hear what uh, if there's a difference of opinion. Um, in all honesty, uh, I think it's up to you. But I mean, we just read straight from part 107 what they think. They did mention towing there. You kind of um, threw I don't, that in there. You know, it is subjective, but really again, nilly. you guys got to be really careful of 107.23a, which is kind of the catch-all blanket for going after idiots, which says you cannot fly a drone in a careless or reckless manner mm-hmm. that could cause undue harm to person or properties on the ground. And so what I could hear coming out of that is definitely some subjective perspectives from yeah. the FAA, right? Yeah. As to whether you were hazardous in your operation. All right, guys, in this episode, we talked a lot about can you tow someone with a drone on a snowboard? We talked about the different things. But just after we ended the recording, we were wondering about two other little limitations that could interfere with your ability to do this. And I wanted to bring them to your attention. And I think this is really important. So on part 107, page 11, they say an external load operations are allowed if the object being carried by the unmanned aircraft is securely attached and does not adversely affect the flight characteristics or controllability of the aircraft. Although, transportation of property for compensation or hire allowed, provided that the aircraft, including its attached systems, payload, and cargo, weigh less than 55 pounds. Now, here's the thing. You know, you're talking about transportation of property for compensation or hire. This guy is not property. He's a person. Yeah. So <laughs> just when you think it's cleared up. It's not. It's still gray. It's still gray. Because even that verbiage, including its attached systems. Well, then how do you define a system? So a person I don't think would be a system, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it would be talking about the the gimbal and the cameras and any what dropping the, apparatus. What about the uh, wakeboarding rope and the snowboarding system? Potentially. <laughs> I don't I don't think that's what was intended to be meant by uh, systems there. But it's still gray. I would say, guys, I think this is one you really need to look up on your own. You need to talk to Fizz, though, before you go off and do it. I think it's it's really important. So anyway... On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. Really, though, thank you for listening. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. This is Ask Cadronio. (laughs) 